You may be the CEO of a top 500 company or the owner of a small cafe, but no matter what size of organization in which you are a leader, there are many common characteristics that all leaders should share. The Dean of Henley Business School, John Foster Pedley, is now joining Expresso to chat about some of those essential skills. Um, John, welcome to the show. Always Thank great you. to connect Thank with you. you. I think my first question has to be, is a leader born or is a leader made? Can we turn <laughs> ourselves into leaders? Well, that's not a definitive answer. Yes, some leaders are born. You're born with some characteristics. But of course they are made. I mean, if you can destroy leadership in people, and that's what our schooling system does to some people, yeah. you know, then you can create it as well. And often people think you can teach leadership, but you can certainly learn leadership. So the question to, as an educator is, how do you create the circumstances in which leadership is learned rather than teaching it in the classroom? And you can absolutely do that. A lot of our own leadership potential is completely underdeveloped, so we have so much to offer. Um, I love that, and I love the fact that once you enter into a workspace environment as a leader, yes, you want to lead from the front, but you've also got to foster independence and skills within the staff beneath you. How do you become that mentor? How do you turn yourself into a leader? Through a lot of reflection. I mean, the one thing you cannot be really as a leader is cynical. Or, or depressing or otherwise totally narcissistic. I mean, that's a form of leadership. But to me, leadership is the sort of leader that takes somebody and helps them grow, that gives. And because if you're a good leader, you want your people to be performing brilliantly. And you don't want them to be clones of you. They, you want them to challenge you because none of us knows the answer. So how do you get people to grow? And then you've got to support them and encourage their individuality. Um, I can hear a lot of leaders out there, um, especially in big business, saying, yeah, buddy, in a perfect world. Um, uh, when you are the kind of leader that is used to micromanaging, used to being a perfectionist, um, taking care of those finer details yourself because it's your job, it's your responsibility ultimately, how do you then learn to delegate and let go? Well, let's get one thing right. Perfectionism is a pathology. It's not a good thing. You know, in a rough, crude world where we've got to get things done, you can't be perfect ever. You know, so we've got to get used to the fact that we are not perfect and you've got to do your best in any circumstances. The question is, how do you get everybody lifting to the highest of their potential? And if you're a perfectionist leader, you will micromanage and you will devalue and debase the people around you rather than inspiring and lifting them. You want a lot of everybody to come to work. You don't just want their conformance and their, their obedience and their intelligence to come to work. You want their creativity, their innovation, and their passion to come to work. If you've got that whole person at work, you've got a person who's working at fantastic potential, are you the sort of leader who can create that? I absolutely love that, and that says to me that you need to then spend the time on the soft skills. You need to, as you say, inspire. You need to create a happy workspace. We know that there are pressures, yes, but why is it so important to be positive, to have that kind of effect on your staff? Because they're all looking to you. Well, let's get it right again. It's not just hard and soft skills. You do need rigor. You need organization. You need discipline. You need control. But if you want to create new business models or new value or, or solve complex problems that all our children are facing, you can't do it with the old way of thinking. You've got to encourage people to think in different and new ways. That means you've got to support that innovation. Productivity is important, but so is innovation. And if you want to get people to be innovative, you've got to let them be present. You've got to encourage their innovation themselves. And you've got to be a sort of leader who allows yourself to be emotional as well as disciplined and austere. So it's that balance in yourself that you've got Basically to Basically like a good parent, like a good parent should be. I, I absolutely <laughs> love that. Um, and I think ultimately it's all about investing in your most important resource, your human capital. John, thank you so much. Hugely informative sessions whenever we, we get to chat to you. I can't wait to have you back on the couch again. And I think there is an entire whole world of other skills that you are able to tap into to become a great leader. So make sure you do your research to ensure that you lead your organization to success.